Hi guys, I hope you're doing well and waiting for another video on Space News. Your wait is over because I have come back with another crazy week of Starship updates. We will tell you about SpaceX Starbase construction that take priority as the next orbital Starship and Super Heavy pair comes together. Now, go ahead and bring your drink and let's simmer down on today's video. Elon Musk has a grand plan for getting humanity out of the confines of the Earth setting off to the moon, Mars, and even further reaches of the solar system. Musk has regularly estimated that humans could establish a city on Mars as early as 2050. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, has led the development of the Starship, the rocket which is designed to refuel and relaunch using liquid hydrogen and methane, unlike the propellant used in the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. That means astronauts will be able to set up depots around the solar system, hopping from planet to planet. Still, Starship 21 is in the development process, as SpaceX team slowly prepare the first orbital class and Super Heavy Booster 4. SpaceX has significantly accelerated and optimized the pace of Starship Super Heavy Booster production and construction progress at the Starbase construction sites in Boca Chica, Texas, over the past few weeks. The company has reportedly transferred hundreds of employees from its other facilities to Boca Chica to assist with that manufacturing surge. For the first time, it appears that SpaceX has begun delivering large quantities of cryogenic liquids to Starship's orbital launch pad, still under construction but rapidly approaching some level of initial operational capability. Sometime in the morning of September 19th, a semi-truck carrying cryogenic liquid nitrogen transport trailer arrived at SpaceX Starbase launch facilities. SpaceX has used for the uncertain future to safely proof test Starship prototypes and supercool their liquid methane and oxygen propellants. We will continue to use liquid nitrogen. However, so far, 100% of all Starbase cryogen deliveries have gone to the suborbital launch site. Instead, it headed exclusively to the first orbital tank farm of the LN2 tanker Starbase and began unloading its cryogenic liquid cargo at several new fill stations designed specifically for the task. By all appearances, the first time the farm's actual main tank has been filled with anything, it appears that liquid nitrogen has been loaded onto one or both of the two insulated LOX tanks. There are two or three main explanations. First, SpaceX could test those more or less full tanks with its first cryogenic liquids. Those partial cryo-proof tests will also help clean and flush the interior of LOX tanks, removing earthly debris or contamination that can become a major hazard when submerged in high-density oxidizers. Given that both tanks can easily hold 1,300 tons of liquid nitrogen, 70 tons is more clunky than a test. However, a semi-decent bare performance would require an order of magnitude more minimum cryo-proof. The other distinct possibility is that SpaceX plans to use only one or both of the two prepared orbital pad tanks to temporarily store liquid nitrogen for Super Heavy Booster 4's first cryogenic proof test. Either way, SpaceX has scheduled the test window every day this week, starting with a six-hour window that opens up at 5 p.m. CDT. As the Starship and Super Heavy tests schedule a full week, with road and beach closures for up to 30 hours for Starship and Super Heavy testing, SpaceX will launch the first orbital class ship and booster, working hard to prepare for many major challenges. The first rolled out at SpaceX's Starbase launch facility more than six weeks ago and was first stacked together on August 6th, with the company finalizing the Starship 20 and Super Heavy Booster 4 spent the last month from heat shield installation to plumbing and wiring. Perhaps most importantly, SpaceX has also installed some or all of the Raptor engines that are expected to support the first static fire worthiness tests of the ship and booster. For many reasons, those steady fires and some additional testing expected to precede them could be a huge milestone for SpaceX's Starship program. SpaceX installed a full 29 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy B4 last month. After returning to Starbase, those engines were removed and eventually reinstalled a few weeks later, albeit with several replacements. Now, after spending the past 11 days sitting on the suborbital pad's launch mount, SpaceX has begun replacing at least one of the Booster 4's 29 installed engines. 
It is not clear why SpaceX is replacing the engines on the launch pad, rather than bringing the Super Heavy back to the building site for the third time. An encouraging sign that the B-4 is nearly ready for its first proof and stable fire tests. Meanwhile, the main attraction at the shipyard right now is the construction site for the new high bay. Using the lessons learned from the first high bay, this new structure is much larger to allow for multiple vehicles to be in assembly at once. The current high bay only has enough room for one vehicle to be assembled, with enough room for workers and equipment. SpaceX is expanding its production capacity at Starbase, ahead of the orbital test flights. Last week, the first Booster 5 section was spotted in the high bay, meaning construction of the next flight vehicles is already underway. After all, SpaceX and the infrastructure needed to support a full booster or ship are limited. The final exciting thing to note is the extension of the quick disconnect arm that is currently being assembled at the shipyard. Located on the northeast side of the shipyard is a location where the OLM was assembled before being moved to the launch site. It's currently the staging area for the QD arm extension and work is progressing quickly. The arm is designed to provide structural support up until the final moments of the countdown as well as provide propellant and connections to the ship. A few months ago, Elon Musk shared on Twitter those 29 Raptors on Booster, initially rising to 32 this year. The next plan SpaceX may aim to use a new Raptor prototype, which is Raptor 2. It is the post-iterative development version of Raptor. In September 2019, SpaceX stated their current plan was to use Raptor 2 for three C-level engines on the Starship second stage and also for all booster engines. They don't have a cover. They are out in the open. In addition, by removing the last two rings of the engine section, you can save a lot of weight. More importantly, Raptor engines appear to be able to handle the heat, which might be the reason they don't need a cover. This prototype promises to bring the most optimal values of propulsion. In addition, it has simpler pipes. This is another reason to reduce complexity and weight. Elon Musk last month confirmed that upcoming versions of Starship, including Ship 21, will have slightly smaller flaps, with the aerodynamic cowling ahead of the flaps being adjusted to optimize re-entry. Different Attachment Techniques of TPS Tiles This will help the maintenance of the Starship heat shield could be done quickly. This is a space theory. We still need to wait for the appearance of this prototype, what Elon Musk will do. As with anything SpaceX is currently working on, what is true this week may not be true next week as the program develops. Regardless, it is clear from the progress made that testing and hopefully the first orbital flight is not far away. That's all for today guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below, so we know where to improve upon. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button for more space videos. Thank you so much for watching, until next time.